It is gears on the piers today, special Lamborghini feature. I'm Matthew Ivanhoe, president of the Cultivated Collector. We sell investment grade classic and exotic cars like this one behind us. I'm gonna walk you around and we're gonna see some of the special cars that are here. This is a 1994 Lamborghini Diablo SE30. Lamborghini produced 150 numbered cars. This was produced for the 30th anniversary of the company. What makes these cars very, very special is extensive use of composites. This car is super, super lightweight. It's almost 300 pounds lighter than a comparable rear wheel drive car of the same era. More horsepower, better suspension, different body. I mean, it's a very, very special car. And this particular car is in the iconic uh, Purple 30. That's actually the name of the color. It was a color made just for this car. So, and every one of these cars is numbered. This is car number 28. This is one of the 25 USA cars. They are just so raw, so visceral, so exciting. The engine is just pure theater. They're actually not that hard to drive. You can drive them. And what I was saying to a couple people earlier, these cars are not made of marzipan. Drive your cars, people. It doesn't really need an introduction. The Diablo GT is just sui generis, in my opinion. One of the most iconic Diablo models, I mean, it was featured in countless video games. I mean, for if you're if you were a millennial or Gen Xer, Diablo GT is hugely iconic. 80 cars produced, um, 80 numbered cars produced, car number 47 of 80. Now, an interesting thing about this particular example that I'm seeing right here, you could order your Diablo GT with comfort seats and an airbag, or you ordered it full sports spec. This car is full sports spec. So you see it's got these racing bucket, these carbon fiber racing bucket seats it's got the non-airbag steering wheel very very desirable but you know when you want it when you want to talk crazy lambo stuff just just look back here look at that monster air box right there you know just pure downdraft awesomeness and by the way notice that they just kind of that they acknowledge that they, you say they acknowledge your fate this car doesn't even have a rear view mirror in it right now Got an early Pantera here. This is pretty cool. A nice chrome bumper Pantera, 72. So yeah, I mean, 70, 73 was the first year of, uh, first year where they started to go impact and then it, then it got more and more festooned with safety stuff. So it's nice to see an early, uh, nice to see an early chrome bumper car here. Um, is this your car? Did I get it? Did I get it right? Yeah, you got it right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I wanted a project. So I found this in the barn in Pennsylvania and did it up. Okay, so we have a, uh, a Ventador. Ventador was introduced in 2011. Less than a thousand Muras produced. You have a little over 1,900 Countaches produced. Uh, a little bit less than 3,000 Diablos produced. Right around 4,000 Mercies produced. Over 11,000 Aventadors. Huracan, Huracan, Huracan. As much as we can say, oh, you know, this or that being broken on a vintage Lamborghini is, is charming. To most people who are going out and purchasing a new car, that's not charming. They're, the reason why vintage Lamborghini is starting to get so strong, frankly, is also because of the strength of, of Lamborghini's branding currently. Three twenty-eights. Um, this is going to sound bad, but it is a, a wonderful place to start. A three twenty-eight is a car that, despite the badge on the nose, to get one in like that has been neglected into fighting fit condition is not going to bankrupt someone. It's something that that like a normal guy, like if you have the budget for a BMW M4, you can buy this. What do you want, a BMW M4 or that? When you're driving this on the street. No one knows that this is a 328 versus a 308. Everyone just sees you and goes, Magnum PI! And, and that, that's, that, that's part of the fun of it. Created well beforehand and, and purchased by this owner well beforehand, but you know, the now iconic Wolf of Wall Street colors. What else, what else needs to be said? It's a white on white Countach. If you look at a Mira chassis and you look at a Countach chassis, Oh my gosh, what a difference. What an anniversary represented versus what a Periscopio represented. I mean, it's like a lifetime apart. I mean, this was the height of excess, uh, the, the height of crazy, whereas, you know, the, the Paris, you know, the Periscopio was this adapted to production, but still just peak 70s wedge, 
concept car brought to life. It was evolved, but it's still the same basic architecture, still the same basic shape. And it's fascinating to see just how much evolution and interpretation came as a result of that. You look at the flares on this, and they're far, and they're, and they're actually, they're smoother, they're integrated, they're not, they're not literally put on with caulk, and it's a much more cohesive thing from a design perspective. I mean, for a while, anniversaries were controversial. I, I park Kuntash outside of my showroom, invariably the kids just practically, they, they hit the brakes so hard, they practically fall off their, their bicycles. You ask them, how old do you think this car is? They'll say 2017, 2020, 2019, which to me says, you know, this shape is still fresh. This shape doesn't date itself. This is my buddy uh, Anthony's car and I have, I have just deputized myself to discuss it. White Testarossa, what else needs to be said? I mean, Miami Vice, 1980s, does it, you know, it, it doesn't really get more iconic than this. You can tell that it's a late Testarossa because it has these five lug wheels right here and the very early cars are what are known as monodados. Monodado literally means it's a single lock and also known as monospecchio. So the early cars have a single mirror uh, and, and the very early cars have the mirror mounted up high. So those are very, very desirable. 87, they dropped the mirrors down, but they still kept the, uh, the center lock wheels. And then in 89, they switched to these five lug wheels here, which is a little bit more practical for people to remove and put on. I think that the Lamborghinis in general are one of the brightest spots in collecting that are out there today. I think, you know, it's basically impossible to find a stone unturned with Ferrari, with so many, with so many other, with Porsche, forget it. Um, but Lamborghini, people are just starting to figure out. And to me, Diablo specifically is is really the, the sort of the, the biggest green space that you can find because they were sort of misunderstood for a very long time. To use a Porsche comparison, to me, Diablo is the 964 10, you know, 10, 15 years ago.